Okay, welcome to the first video in a three-part series on mechanical rigging in 3ds Max. Now we're going to focus today on the HIIK solver, and part two is going to focus on the HDIK solver, and then part three is going to focus on how do we get argument-based controllers to drive these IK solutions. So today's focus, this video is going to be covering the HI IK solver and we're going to use this aircraft model uh, to demonstrate this. Um, I've hidden most of the aircraft except for this uh, left main landing gear strut here. Uh, and the left main landing gear strut, it consists of several moving parts. There's actually things here that are uh, additional moving parts that are hidden. Um, but this is enough to show what we need to for today. So we've got uh, basically a landing gear mount block um, with a hinge. This landing gear mount block is connected to the movement, uh, up and down movement block uh, or assembly. So this is going to be like weight on and off the wheels, controlled by the shock absorber, etc. Normally the landing gear is going to be in a position like this. And then rotating into the fuselage is going to be controlled by this block here. Uh, this is going to rotate up into the fuselage. Now as this does that, uh, as the landing gear strut rotates into the fuselage, the push rod, the upper push rod, is going to push on the bell crank which in turn is going to pull on a lower push rod and that's going to rotate this wheel assembly into a position that allows it to fit in the fuselage. Now in order to control that we're going to use some uh, bone structures and IK solvers. We're going to use the HI solver for this upper portion of the assembly, the push rod and the bell crank and then we're going to use an HD IK solver for this lower push rod and the wheel assembly. Now one thing I've done here to make it a little bit easier to work is I've rotated the landing gear into the XY plane so that I can create the bones easily uh, and then uh, line them up and, and whatnot. One of the interesting uses of the uh, or constraints of the HIIK solver is that all of its movement needs to be in a single plane. So that means all of your joint positions need to be coplanar. We've got three joint positions we need to control here. We've got a hinge joint for the bell crank, we've got a ball socket joint for the lower end of the push rod, and a ball socket joint for the upper end of the push rod. Now, those three joints are coplanar, but they are not in the plane that we need them to be in. So looking at towards the back of the aircraft, we can see that this bell crank needs to rotate in the XY plane uh, about the Z axis. and what we want is everything to be coplanar, so that means all of these joints need to be coplanar as well. This is not coplanar with all of the uh, the movement that we need, so we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to create our bone structure in a single plane here, but rather than having the terminator bone connected up here with this uh, socket position, we're going to leave it in plane with the rest and we're just going to link that to, uh, push rod to the bone. Now we can get away with that because the rotation axis here and here are parallel and uh, consistent with this ball joint here. So. Once uh, once these two things are parallel um, and this is fixed in relationship to this uh, hinge point, we can then keep the bone structures parallel in this position uh, and allow them to control the push rod in that position without uh, causing any distortion 
because of the geometry of that. All right, so we're going to start out. We'll go to our top view, and we're going to create some bones here. Sorry about that. Go to Animation, Bone Tools, and Create Bones. Now one of the first decisions you have to make is where do you want your root and where do you want your terminator bone? Uh, what you normally use as a rule of thumb for deciding that is the location that has the most movement is the one that you're going to use as the terminator bone. Uh, so it's going to have the most degrees of rotation, the most uh, position movement, etc. Um, depending on how you view things, if we select this, sorry about that, let's get out of bone creation mode here. If we rotate this strut around this pin, we can we can view this as either this position moving for these two joints or we could view it as this position moving um, in space and that gives us a little bit of freedom in how we do th this but one other thing to uh, think about is that I found that you get the most control in the rotation that you want to do by assigning the root uh, where you want to control the rotation. So for us we're going to pick this joint because we want to control the rotation of this axis of this uh, bell crank. We're going to pick this as the root. So we're going to position over here, left click and drag, left click and drag, and left click and drag, and right click to terminate. Now we don't have to be real accurate here uh, because we're going to clean this up in a, just a moment. So we just want to get it in approximate location. Now if we look at our bone structure, it's actually not created where we need it, so we're going to have to line things up. So we're going to do some selection, and we're going to align with our hinge pin, and we're going to pick the XYZ position and we can see that it dragged the entire bone structure down with it when we did that. Now to line up the rest of this, um, we're going to go into bone edit mode and this allows us to change the length and positions of the bones without affecting the others, um, which is a good thing because we don't want our root bone to move now that we have it in position. So we select our second bone and we're going to align it and you can see that I've created a point here for my socket. This is going to control the joint location. It's always a good idea to create some dummies uh, to help you do that. So I just aligned it XYZ with that joint and then we're going to do the same thing with our terminator bone with a slight bit of difference. The terminator bone is going to be aligned with the socket position like we did before, but instead of aligning it in the Z position, we're just going to leave it in the same XY plane that it was in. So now we have our bone joints aligned in vertical space. So XYZ, XYZ, XY, and we're just leaving the Z off because this line from this joint to this joint, or this bone joint to that socket joint, the line there forms an axis which is parallel to this axis which is parallel to that axis. And that's going to allow us to uh, do the right rotations that we need to do here. Okay, so we've got our, our bones in position here. What we're going to do now is get out of bone edit mode and we're going to create our IK solver. So we go to animation, IK solvers, HI solver, oop, let's start out here. Let's select the root bone first. There we go. Animation, IK solvers, HI solver, 
and then we'll drag this over and left click on the terminator bone. Now that's created our end goal. The end goal is what is used uh, to move the bone joints around, the bone structure around, and the, uh, the system will solve for joints in between the terminator bone and joint and the root bone joint. Um, do all that positioning for us. Now if we were to drag this now we can see that we're dragging and sometimes it doesn't move or when it does it's a little jerky. Um, so the way we get rid of that is to go over here to thresholds and set this to zero. And now when we drag our end goal around the movement is nice and smooth and that's exactly what we want. Alright, so let's go ahead and start linking parts up. We're going to select our root bone and link it to our main landing gear structure. Uh, we could have linked it to the hinge pin which is where we're trying to uh, control movement. Uh, either way this is going to work. Now we're going to link our bell crank to our first bone. We're going to take the push rod and link it to the second bone and now we can test our bone movement out. So let's get up here and we'll select this, go into rotation and start dragging it around and we can see that our bell crank is rotating along with the bones and it is looking just fine. Now let's go ahead and see if it rotated in the right plane. Looks pretty good. If we hadn't, uh, if we hadn't have kept this bone in line with the XY plane and moved it up to the ball socket, our plane would have been at a slope. And then as this joint, which was up here before, as it, uh, in, in that position, as we pushed it around, um, that plane would continue to be at that location and would have pushed the ball joint down here and that would have caused twisting in the parts. So that's why we needed to have these bones lined up in the XY plane to keep this rotation in that same plane of mo uh, motion. Alright, this is uh, that's it for the first video on how to do IK solutions. Um, for rigging in uh, mechanical parts. And the second part will cover HD IK solutions to drive this push rod and this wheel assembly here. Thank you for watching.